like the call to order the district chaplain council meeting for April 4th at 4 30 p.m. I'd like to uh, have the opening statement read, please. This meeting is being recorded. As we gather today on a special territory of the Treaty 8 Nation to conduct the business of the District of Chelan, we do so knowing that we are privileged to serve the citizens of this community, and we shall endeavor to conduct our business in their best interest. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Prior to adoption of the agenda, is there any new business? Not hearing any adoption of the agenda. Any discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? I'm conducting a meeting. I guess I should ask do we have a form? Four of us here. Laura's on. Laura's on. Perfect. Okay, we will continue. Minutes. Uh, from uh, March 21st, 2022. Motion to receive. Second. Discussion? Any omissions? All those in favor? Any opposed? Hi. I had a hard time bringing it up on my um, laptop, but I just wanted, I was just looking at the minutes, and I wonder if we could amend. Um, uh, there was some discussion about the library. Actually, I believe Mr. Mayor was in your report. And it was mentioned uh, on the new cafe space, but it also said the bistro. And I just wonder if we should clarify for the new for the new library space if, if we don't know what that looks like. So it would just be a, a cafe space at this point. <laughs> Staff, uh, is that an omission or is that an amendment? Uh... That was in um, Councilor Beck's report. Did you want to amend that? We could get a motion. We could get a motion. That, that's fine with me. Could I get a motion anyway? I'll make that motion. Sorry. Any discussion on the amendment? All those in favor? Any opposed? Just, just okay, go ahead. Uh, the discussion, just just as I mentioned there, just just to clarify that it is a cafe space at this point. We don't know what that would look like going forward. Uh, we captured that. Thank you. Any other omissions or clarify the minutes from March 21st? All those in favor of the minutes, or do we make the motion to accept minutes from uh, March 21st? Uh, the motion has actually been carried already. Okay, great. Great. Uh, no delegations, bylaws, committee reports. Any councillors have any uh, reports? Uh, Councillor Beck? I have a report from the uh, Chapman Communication Society at their annual general meeting and uh, all of the chairs and treasurers and so on were elected. Um, also, uh, I'm not aware of, um, if everybody's aware that uh, Marlon is the general manager of the station down there in Holland. Oh. Doing a heck of a good job. If, uh, um, weaned themselves off of the um, uh, the uh, East River Regional District um, grants. Uh, they've been on them for the last couple of years, and also they've uh, 
they got several challenges in front of them that they had, uh, him and his staff appeared to be doing a heck of a good job. Um, I'd like to thank him for that. Also, um, we have an update from the, um, the library board that are um, picking um, colors and flooring, making preliminary decisions on the colors and flooring for the library and the um, the um, the um, beast or cafe. Um, it it uh, doesn't appear to have a um, they won't be doing have a have a stone for. Uh, there's a couple of things that are going to, um, it, it's not going to be the same as it was apparently. So, and I guess this was all um, decided some time ago. So, um, and that's it. Any other uh, reports? Okay. Uh, Mayor's report, uh, I have included uh, a PRRD. Uh, a letter in my report, so I will uh, read the report. Uh, we had a surgical update, and this update uh, is to increase uh, the trauma program services accessible to the north. This will be based in Fort St. John. Uh, increase in complex complexity of volume of, of orthopedic sur surgeries available in the northeast, uh, treatment of bone, joints, ligaments, tendons, and muscles. Uh, provided Provide orthopedic surgery services, including, including total joint replacement in both the Dawson Creek and Fort St. John hospitals. Uh, these services alone will attract doctors and nurses who want to live in the northeast or northeast of the province and would like to, who would like to further their uh, education in this field. Uh, <clears throat> This presentation is called the North e uh, for the Northeast uh, Distribution of Services, March 2022. And that was put out by Northern Health. So uh, that alone is called the Surgical Update, Distribution of Services, March 2022. And for the electoral, air, uh, electoral boundaries, uh, conference call of with the district chambers of commerce in the north, uh, northern area, the chambers express to, to uh, convey that we have an uh, online survey we should and must participate in as uh, residents of the north for the electoral boundaries. So that being said, you can search it on the British Columbia Electoral Boundaries Commission. And when we do get information on where the next meeting will be in person, we will put that on our face, uh, Facebook page and advertise in our co local coffee talk. So there's a couple things that need to be done as uh, citizens if we're to be heard. The survey, and if we can get to an in, uh, in-person uh, meeting with the commission, the commission tells us that we need uh, your uh, opinion, your voice, in order for us to hear. So if we can't get there in person, it probably will be in Fort St. John or Dawson Creek. So, and right now it's up to April 11th or uh, 9th in the Kootenays and around the Canal area. So we're getting close to our area. So once we find out, they're going to probably give us about a, a week to 10 days to uh, try to organize something once they get the uh, meeting date and place to uh, hold the meeting. Uh, so uh, met with the Oil and Gas Commission, questions on reclamation of abandoned well, oil wells. The possibility of safety and public contractors, the safety of public contractors who are performing the reclamation during hunting season. So this was brought up uh, because it's out uh, where people do the hunting, where there's roads uh, that access uh, the, uh, the hunting areas and there's uh, reclaimed, uh, they're doing the reclamations in this area. So this was brought up by ourselves and staff that we need to have a safety uh, system implemented so that somebody doesn't get hurt seriously. And uh, she just got back to me here today and uh, 
and they're putting something together for us, so I'll have that uh, on my next uh, report. Uh, on, the, on the front of the world stage, it becomes apparent that uh, in the Ukraine, we had, I had an invitation sent to me and it read the cabinet of the Ministry of the Government of Ukraine and the Ministry of Economy, Economy of the Government of the Ukraine via the international trade. Kindly invites Alan Kutre, Honorable Alan Kutre, to participate in the upcoming online briefing March 31st, 2022. Topics of discussion, global food security, how neighboring countries are managing for food stock, uh, their food stocks. Uh, Ukraine has been known as the breadbasket of the world, and that's uh, and it's apparent that 50% of the global grain exports come from the Ukraine. So that's a pretty big part. And the Ukraine <clears throat> global supplies for uh, iron ore and steel is 25%. So uh, some of the ports that are being uh, affected to the Black Sea with the uh, export from are being affected. This is uh, one of the things that was brought up by the ministers. And uh, one of the things that at the end and at the beginning, he asked, says, we can send money, but we need weapons. And this is an economic uh, minister. And it's very desperate uh, in the Ukraine and he finished on those same words that he they need help in that fashion to fight back. So it, it was uh, it wasn't eye opening. It was just disturbing that uh, we have to hear from the countries that uh, when we sit here and uh, have meetings and go out for coffee, and it, it just distressing. And it was uh, it was it was quite uh, quite quite difficult to uh, listen. Uh, that they were sitting there talking about their own country and their people dying. So, anyway, with, uh, with that, uh, uh, today uh, we met with, uh, with the new administrator of the Northern Life College, and, uh, Steve Dowling. So it was important that he wanted to uh, request that we, met, we meet. So I met with him and uh, his staff to uh, sit with us. And uh, he's just getting his feet wet. So I said, well, well, we'll meet maybe in about a month, month and a half, maybe in May, and set up another meeting with council and staff and uh, Stephen, maybe some of his staff. So get things uh, figured out on what uh, we can do and what he and uh, Northern Lights College can do for us. So it was, uh, it was a good meeting this morning, and uh, hopefully we can get back into a good relationship with our Northern Lights College because it, it is a very good building there, and uh, that's uh, what uh, Steve pointed out this morning. Okay, uh, uh, from the PRRB, a statement regarding racist remarks for Chief Judy Desiree from Blueberry uh, First Nation. And uh, it's uh, released from the PRRB March 25th. So, Chair Brad Sperling, uh we are aware of the anonymous voicemail sent to Blueberry River First Nation Chief Desiree, in which repulsive racist comments and threats were made. I want to be very clear that the Peace River Regional District fully condemns racism and expressions of hatred, and we are incredibly disappointed that the events have occurred. There is no instance or scenario that justifies a member of our community being threatened this way. The PRRD have been actively engaged in conversation with our First Nation partners about how we can set the table for in in inclusivity. The, pro the progress towards a relationship that is based on a foundation of honesty, integrity, and trust. It is imperative that the residents of the Peace Region feel safe within their communities. The remarks made this week reinforce why this work is critical and why we will this one will be uh, third fervently. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, continue our efforts in this capacity. 
contact information, that's from the PRB chair. So that one was there, and uh, when, when I first heard about it, uh, the response was made when they first contacted me, and, and it was one of these uh, issues where it was, uh, in, they talked about in camera stuff, and uh, we have a hard time with always trying to keep a secret. And it's not in my good, uh, I, I guess, uh, behavior that I would like to let everybody know when something is going on, and that should be the way way of the land and way of the people, and, and it seems that it's not that way in, in political means. And uh, so anyway, <clears throat> the response uh, from myself is that, and as I'm sure you're aware, Blue Mary First Nation Chief Benjamin recently received a death threat. Uh, this has been very upsetting, not only to the Chief Benjamin and the family, but to all of us in the Northeast, and particularly to me as an Indigenous person. The province must take into consideration the cumulative effects of policies, uh, agreements, court cases, and strategic plans on all Northeast citizens. The partnership uh, agreement back country closures to snowmobiles, old, old growth forestry policies reviews, and the Yankee versus British Columbia, that'd be Blueberry versus uh, British Columbia. And the individuals conclude that someone was, th this, uh, this part when I wrote it, this is how I felt then. This is, this is very particular to an individual. And when, when an individual starts writing stuff that uh, is pretty close to the heart and uh, meaningful in a lot of ways, I, I can't put that down in some, some form sometimes and it uh, kind of disturbed me that the penmanship and uh, the thought doesn't come together sometimes. But for, for all the considerations and all, all the things that happen in the world uh, with the AD and uh, the hunting, uh, an, indiv an individual concluded that someone was at fault and then took the steps of blaming and threatening violence on an indigenous leader. The threat is real for all Indigenous people. The Chief of Blueberry First Nations is the focal point in this instance. You may recall that other elected officials and I expressed concerns to you that this very thing would happen as a result of the province's recent policy decisions that affect the Northeast region. Uh, Broad-based policy decisions have wide-range impacts. From the beginning of the Northeast, from the beginning, the Northeast has raised concern that the province has not obtained sufficient local knowledge or done the appropriate amount of uh, research before enacting policies that, that have huge implications economically and recreationally without even, even ensuring that the policies will have a positive outcome. This was uh, short-sighted to say the least. I would like to welcome the chance to speak more with you about the matters, my cell number, and uh, the district that shot one, Alan Kutre. So with those two things that uh, came about, it was uh, quite disheartening to say that we are still in that uh, process of uh, trying to re reconcile with one another. When I say one another, I mean neighbors, right? That's what we are. And, and it took, uh, Took me about five minutes to uh, say that I need you to respond, but it took me more than that, maybe a day to try to figure out what uh, needed to be said, and uh, I could have put more. We could have been downright get right out there. Here it is. This is what we need to say. But to say that would be uh, kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't. And here I am talking about racism which uh, I, I believe that we're moving in a good direction here in China. We've always moved that way, and we've always been responsible for what we say, and we've always taken that responsibility to our hearts and making sure that we, as people, deserve a little bit better. And uh, when, when I see that, it's a good So anyway, report. Adoption of the report. All those in favor? Questions? 
Questions? Yeah, I, I just want to comment on, on some of that too. This is the first that I've heard of uh, an actual death threat going to uh, the chief of the blueberry, which is, you know, honestly speaking, I think it's absolutely stupid. I mean, if anybody out there thinks that that's going to solve the problem, if they think it's going to go away if somebody is hurt or injured or worst case killed, like the, it shows such a lack of intelligence. I don't even know what to even start to, to start to say about that. And as far as what's going on right now with uh, the Blueberry Court decision, this isn't a racial issue. This is a legal issue. And it was an issue that was decided by the Supreme Court. And it's not their fault. It's not what they're doing. Uh, there, there's two people in Goshen. There's the government and there's Blueberry First Nations. And, and the government could get, absolutely be the one dragging their heels on this. So any backlash going to that community, um, it's a legal system. The legal system takes time. Um, <laughs> It was decided in the courts to give me a break. You're actually going to threaten violence? It's not going to overturn a court decision. It's, it's, I don't know. I just had to respond to that. It's the craziest thing. Any other uh, discussion? Let's get a motion on the floor. All those in favor? Any opposed? Get No new business. We have information items. Anything to? C one. Motion to receive C one. Discussion. Uh, just a little bit of discussion that uh, I see that we have eight signatures on C1 at the bottom there for, uh, for that. So when we talk about uh, a little bit of neighboring and reconciliation, we have an opportunity just to say that this is something that culturally driven and fouls have been taken for several years maybe since uh, the 21st century or so, we're, we're looking at something that is, is a possibility of being the neighbor that uh, we talk about being very good neighbors with our First Nations, uh, mainly uh, Soto and, uh, and uh, West Moberly, and their signatures along this uh, document here that uh, we're we're discussing the uh, spirit of the peace, and that's in Taylor. So, any more discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? Okay. Okay, everybody. Activation items. One to five, anything to pull out of there? I would like to pull one four. It's a compass. Yeah, I have, uh, I, I, information I have in number five, and then, yeah, it is. Okay, so we'll get with that uh, one, two, three, and five. Mm -hmm. Okay, all those in favor? Any opposed? There we go. Okay, on, on the compass one, 
uh, input sought for high speed internet initiative. So it was brought up at the PRRB that uh, there's $830 million as stated in this uh, 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 report here. What was uh, the concern with uh, the PRRB was uh, the length of time to get that uh, observation to, and it was the end of April. So they thought that was a short window. So that's the information from the PRRB that uh, it was kind of a short uh, window to get through the issues and for that. Okay, and with that, I need a motion to accept I five, unless there's other discussion on my part. I four. I four. Second. Okay, yeah, I just uh, assume that the mayor, uh, I, I don't use the internet a whole bunch myself, but apparently everybody else does, and it's not, not coming fast enough. So, a patient had a template ready to go yesterday and fired it off. Okay. To accept, I have four. All those in favor? Any opposed? Okay. Reports to action. RA1, 2022 Veterans Way Road Repaving. At the bid price of 126,000, dollars and fifty cents. Any discussion? Um, can you guys hear me? Yes. Really? Yes. Okay, I, I just have a question on that. Um, and maybe you correct me if I'm wrong. Did we not run into the issues one time with Peter Brothers doing another road saving for us? Um, I'm not actually sure if we in Chetwind have. I know that they're well respected in the paving community, so I I personally haven't had any issues with them. And I know that you, yeah, I know the city of Fort St. John uses them often. Okay, thank you. I was just wondering, uh, Desiree, what are the prices looking like now? Are they trying to enough for the like we've always kind of budgeted for two hundred and fifty thousand for patching the paving town. Is that still keeping to be enough, or are prices probably out of that range? Uh, well, based on the results from this tender, it seems we're kind of on track for that. So, yeah. any more discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? Okay. RA2, Feather and Pride Walkways. I just, um, I, I'm just curious as to why the Pride sidewalk is where it's at. Um, actually, you know what? I don't even know where it's at, to be honest with you. It, um, it doesn't. Is it the sidewalk across from Carl's to the IGA? No. It's um, actually at the corner across from Garbers Road by the Pomeroy going across from the Country Motor Inn and we tried to pick a neutral general public location. 
Okay. Okay. Now the feather, the feather crossings. There's a lot of them. That's a lot. Do, does there have to be that many? I thought in the beginning we were talking about the schools. There's not seven schools. I don't believe. That's a lot of sidewalks. We included um, one downtown uh, adjacent to Tansy and one in front across, I believe, over at the emergency shelter. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of them are all schools. Okay, and I, I guess I have a question on the on, on the upkeep of them. Like, is this gonna how what what are the cost implications of having that many sidewalks that have to be up kept up kept up like that? Um, traditionally, our sidewalks and white systems are done every season, so we're expecting that this will last the season, and we can look at this again for twenty twenty three. Okay. Um, but it's within the white onset of the crosswalk to um, um, support the transit so you don't lose the crosswalk and the visual. Yeah. Um, and the feather is only a certain size. So we can try it on and we'll see how, they, how long they last. Um, but it was meant to be seasonal and for 2022 and then review for 2023 and ongoing. Okay. I, I did love the idea and mm -hmm. I just think that's a lot to keep maintained. Um, and I'm guessing this is what it's going to look like, correct? That is the visual, yes. Good. And is it correct that the co-op donated the paint for them? That is correct. Um, the co-op um, had a funding opportunity that supported the pride um, sidewalks, and we then added what we needed for most of the costs that's involved in that, but the white and orange we already do in other areas. So we had to come up with a little bit of a change on the pride one to make sure we were following crosswalks and standards for our transportation. Okay. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? Okay. R A three. R A three. I would make that motion that council authorized the purchase of a twenty twenty two Chevy Silverado twenty five hundred HD CK two oh nine four three. Four wheel drive crew cab, 172 inch work truck from Brown's um, Chevrolet Buick GM for $60,452. All set. Discussion? Um, I have a question on that. Yeah, go ahead, Gosser. Um, I, I noticed that um, it was submitted by Dan, so are you saying this is a fire chief truck? Right? That's correct. Awesome, thank you. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? Carried. R84 Mount Memory Wildfire Interface Fire. I believe this one we asked for information from our uh, chief. Any questions on his report? We asked that he get information from other districts, I believe, or communities. Um, I have a question on that. Yes, go ahead, Councillor. Um, so, um, I, I see the conclusion, like in his report, I mean, it really doesn't, really doesn't specify a plan and if something happens again of what's going to happen. I, I would personally like to see something written up saying that if something happens again, that that truck is not taken out of our area. 
And if we have to support another fire department, so be it. We can figure out another way to do that. But I think it's going to be right up because I mean, our CAO, we go to the CAO and we go through the fire chief and stuff like that. And things all get in writing. Um, I think that would be better if we get that possible. Any other discussion? Yes. <clears throat> that is probably what I expected to happen. Like after we tabled that previous, I thought that's what we were going to get today. Something in rain going forward that we would uh, recommend it or not. So, if council wishes to make that policy decision, that's certainly within your purview. Um, and the reason we didn't come out with a blanket statement is because every fire is different. Mm -hmm. So, in, and as this documentation shows, the Mount Moray fire was racing toward Chatham. All of our mutual aid agreement communities were sending out firepower, you know, trucks, tenders, and, and firefighters to fight it. So, in that case, we thought. Um, in a spirit of mutual like, aid, we wanted to aid the PRD. So that's how, you know, basically in a nutshell, that's what our rationale was. So if another fire occurred, we would have to make a decision with a whole new set of circumstances. Mm -hmm. So it's difficult to come up with one policy statement. Do you see what I'm saying? Right. Chief, did you have something to add? I would concur with that. I mean, every scenario is, is different and, um, yeah. Yeah, every uh, every situation is different. So, well, I mean, we certainly can put uh, guidelines in place that stipulates how we go through the process to make those decisions, and how that's all encompassed, um, and then gives us the latitude to make um, decisions to support whatever the incident may be occurring. So, um, can I just say something? I agree with all that. I think it's important that you have guidelines and stuff, but I, I think um, it also be, needs to be specified that we don't put our rural residents in jeopardy by taking the tender truck out of our community. I mean, I, I agree we have fire department, but 25 kilometers is a long way for back for our rural residents. And I might just think that we need to have something a little bit better. I, I just want to comment that, um, and, and I think uh, staff got that right. Every every incident is is a different scenario. They may not need the tanker truck next time. They may need it, another resource. So to write a policy, um, you could write a, a thousand policies, and that situation would never arise. So I think each individual scenario requires a different thought. I agree with that to a certain point. Oh. Continue. Oh. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Uh, yeah, we can hear you. Continue. Okay. And then okay. Council so, yeah, doesn't does it. Every situation is different, but there's only one truck. The tender truck is the only truck that they can use in a resident house, a rural fire, save a resident. That, that's the only truck they can use. So I don't see how that changes anything. Councilor Mazanowski, and then uh, I, I agree with the concern. Um, when it comes to fires, though, everything is just so unpredictable, and I think we just have to put the faith into our fire chief. Um, you know, we have we have staff, we have professionals, we hire a chief um, that we have to rely on to, to make these decisions. It, it, it kind of like be up to us to make a policy for a doctor when somebody has a heart attack, but they've got to make the best choice that they can at that time. And um, Mr. Fire Chief, if he continue to make 
court decisions time after time again in the community. We've got to have a different discussion. But you know, we saw at that log yard fire there that uh, fire trucks from how many communities showed up to, to help out there. And uh, you know, when there's a disaster and everything that go by that mountain where it's fire, I honestly can't believe that they stopped it. And it kind of shows me too. This is what the Forest Service can actually do when they really try. <laughs> when there's power lines in the way and whatnot. But I, I think we got to leave it in the hands of the people that we that we hired to take care of this stuff. I, it's something like wildfire. I, I just don't see how we can write a policy that's something that's going to cover off every every situation. Chief, I think we can take this as a as a learning opportunity because this is a scenario that hasn't occurred before with us utilizing our resources outside of our uh, protection area. And so having said that, you know, when we do come across this circumstance again, if it arises, that we'll be able to make better decisions based on what we've gone through in the past. And then we can make uh, alternative decisions as far as supporting the community. Um, and in reference to uh, rural fire suppression uh, activities, our first line engine is, uh, is our engine. Our, our fire truck goes out, it has a thousand gallons of water on it to any of our rural fire protection area. The tender is a water truck that goes and supports that with 3,000 gallons. So it supplements that activity. And with the volunteer department, we have um, an uncertainty to what we have for staffing. So if everybody's in town, everybody's at the hall, everybody gets on the truck real quick and we go. If we have a delay of any sort, the delays is part of the, the incident. But the tender doesn't have, it has limited firefighting um, activity. It doesn't have hose that we're able to um, deploy. Um, and it's just designed to shovel water from point A to point B. So our engines are first line that has all the fire, fire suppression activity, uh, utilities and tools that we utilize in those fires. So, um, but I think that there's a lot of things that we can take away from this scenario that we went through and that we can make you know, stronger decisions in the future for um, whatever the circumstances present themselves. Um, we're, we're on schedule to have a second tender within a couple of years, am, am I correct? Watch your lights. Um, yes, so I've had a preliminary discussion with a regional district at setting the parameters of what we want to see for our new tender. And so again, that is, I think it's almost at a 500 day build. So as soon as we, by the, by hopefully by May, we should have the specs to the regional district and then they'll be able to go through how they're going to be able to uh, move forward with it. So 500 days from when they make a commitment to a vendor. So, and then at that point, we'd have two in town. There'd be one to be here and one, one to go out. So we're, we're looking at an interim, interim problem, I guess, for a two-year period that we just have to come up with a bit of a solution for it. I'm not a late place at all, either the experts. I don't know anything about it, but... The fact that this was an interface fire and the fact that there you know, structures, buildings, homes, power lines uh, were at risk, how much did that factor into the decision to, to take the truck out there? Um, that played all the factors, right? So when we started seeing that there was residential homes that were impacted. And because of the nature of last year and the province, the way it was igniting and burning incredibly unpredictable, um, when it blows our direction all the time, it doesn't matter where it is, the unpredictability of it is when it gets closer. And if we're able to um, take the actions that we did to minimize that and isolate it, then the more resources that you're able to throw at it in a short period of time um, gives you a greater um, benefit of trying not to encroach. Yes, the distance is probably greater than um, what one would expect us to be responding to. But again, um, we do have uh, an asset out there as, as far as the, um, the mine. But although we don't give a, um, fire suppression uh, services there, it is still um, part of the district. Any other uh, questions about the report? 
just rereading um, an original deployment, the second paragraph, I, I'm quite satisfied with uh, how that's laid out there. Um, the conversation between the fire chief or designate with the CAO or designate and then the mayor, uh, I think they know exactly what they're doing as far as protocol. Okay, uh, any more discussion on the, the report? Uh, any motion for the report? Please, if I could have a motion to receive the report. So we make the motion to receive for information. To receive for information. Okay, receive for information. All those in favor? Any opposed? Carry. Okay. No new business, reports, no reports. Any public on the phone? Not very much. Media questions? Okay. Okay, adjournment.